Hey everyone, welcome back. Thank you for being here. So, Unify Protect, represented by this UDR right here, and a non-Unify camera, in this case it's a real lean camera. Up until not too long ago, they would be like oil and water, they would not mix. Apparently now they can. So of course I had to try it for myself, and this will not be a tutorial, this will be just me taking you along with me for the ride. And just to be clear, this is not a sponsored video, all the gear here was purchased with my own funds. So, let, let's get this party started, let's go! Alright guys, so I'm sorry for the mess around here, there's a lot of baby stuff and the recording angle is not ideal, but this is where I have my PoE switch right behind this box here, it's a, a Ubiquiti USW, a US Lite 8 PoE, I already have the cable connected to a PoE port on the correct VLAN, this is the camera so let's unbox it, now this is not an unboxing video as well, I'm just interested in grabbing the camera, and as I said, this is not a tutorial, so I haven't tried this before, I don't know if it's, it will even work, but there are a few things you need to keep in mind before you get started as well. The camera you are buying, if it's not a Unify or a Ubiquiti camera, it needs to support OnVIF. That's the sort of the open standard for cameras, as far as I could research. So if it doesn't support OnVIF, it won't, it won't work. Second, in some cases, as far as I could understand, even if you fulfill all the requirements and you enable OnVIF regarding on how the interface is on the camera you're buying, it might not jump or appear in Unify Protect ready to be adopted, so you'll have to manually adopt it, and of course I'll try it and show it if I succeed. So let's grab the camera here. This is a, a, a PoE powered camera, so let's unwrap it. Now, I haven't worked with real lean camera before, but I understand they're supposed to be great cameras, but regardless, I'm not really going to be using it day to day. So, I see there's the PoE port right here, I'm just going to throw it right here and connect it to the PoE cable. Now, I haven't worked with real lean camera, so I might I might take a look at this user manual because I do need, as far as common sense tells me, I will need to somehow get into the web interface or management of the camera in order to maybe, if it's not on by default, eh, to find out how to enable OnVIF. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to launch Unify Protect. Maybe it will just work, maybe OnVIF is enabled by default, so before I start tinkering I will see, I will, uh, see about that. Alright guys, enough talking, let's get to the computer. Alright guys, so I'm at the computer, I already launched uh, my Unify uh, network, and I'm not interested in network, I'm interested in uh, Unify Protect, so let's go ahead and launch that. My hope is that we, it will just work and the camera will be discovered, but as I, as I can see, it doesn't. So since this is not something I have tried before uh, off camera, something I'm trying it for the first time with you guys. So I am going to refer quickly to the user manual just to find out how to get into the management interface of the camera. I'm going to pause the recording and resume it once I've done that. All right, guys. So apparently I need to download something from Reoling, so called the Reoling client or something like that. There's a link in the user manual, I already went and downloaded the installer and I already installed it, so I'm going to go into the Reolink application or client or whatever and see what I'm going to see over there. This is just a, 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 a virtual machine running on Proxmox, it's connected to the same VLAN as the camera and as, as I can see here, the camera is showing up as not initialized, so maybe we'll need to initialize it. Let's double click or something. Okay, so the password. There's gotta be uh, uh, maybe a default password or something. Or maybe it, needs, it wants me to create a password, so let's do that. Alright guys, so for some reason I don't know why I couldn't create a password. 
I just went to the camera and factory reset it with a physical reset button and now I created the camera and everything is fine so I'm going to continue here name your device let's click on next nothing else interests me and we can see we do have an image which is great now I'm not interested in that at all I just want to go to the settings maybe this is these are the settings all right great so I need to look for the onvif setting I know for a fact before buying this camera I researched and I found out this camera does support onvif so let's look for it I'm, my in my uh, common sense tells me it will be somewhere in the network section network information no network maybe in network settings no let's go into the advanced um, UPnP DDNS NTP server settings ah yes here's the onvif setting all right so it's not letting me choose it maybe I need to enable RTSP confirm on vif confirm all right we're getting somewhere let's click on save and maybe I'll restart the camera just to be sure let's go to system maintenance yeah here's the reboot just for for good measure I'm trying to reboot it now I'm going to give the camera a few seconds to actually reboot and then I'm going to go back to a uh, unify protect to see maybe that helped all right so the camera is back online and this will be a good time to go back to unify protect so let's do that still not showing up let's maybe refresh this page not showing up at all all right so in this case it's another thing that i sort of researched before starting this video in some cases even if you fulfill all the requirements also and enable on vif cameras third party cameras might not show up in that case you'll click on the question mark right here and try advanced adoption this is sort of a manual adoption and all you need to do is to supply the IP address of the camera. This is the IP address in my case. The username is admin and this is the password I created. And let's see, maybe it will just work. No, unsupported camera. Hmm. What else is missing? Let me go back to the camera settings and maybe we'll need to enable some other things. All right, so I'm just going to select to enable HTTP and HTTPS just you know, to see if that makes a difference. Let's click on save. Let's go back. Okay, so now that I enabled HTTP and HTTPS, I'm going to restart this entire process. Here's the IP address once again. Here's the username once again. Here's the password once again. And let's see. All right, this looks like, oh yeah, this is, now it worked. So all I need, needed to do, and again, this is pro probably relevant just for real link cameras, is to enable not only the RTSP in order to be able to, to enable on VIF. I also had to enable HTTP and HTTPS. Maybe it's just one of them, but regardless, when I went back to Unify Protect, I was able to go into the I can't find my device question mark right here advanced adoption gave the IP address username password and then the uh, Unify protect was able to adopt this real link camera and we can see that we do have an image with a real link kind of uh, logo which is a really strange thing to see after all these years working with Unify protect with only Unify protect cameras it's it's crazy but there is a difference as far as I could tell if we we'll go to the settings here we actually don't have a lot of settings we can uh, 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 work with just maybe changing the name of the camera creating a tag N nothing really that can control the camera and it makes sense because uh, uh, Unify or Ubiquiti will not try to uh, implement all the APIs for all manufacturers when if we we'll compare it to some other Unify 
protect cameras, we do have a lot of settings we can play around with, notifications and advanced settings, and there's a lot of things, image tuning, which is not available in the uh, third-party cameras. But again, it's a great thing to have third-party cameras in Unify Protect. One quick, quick note that I forgot to mention, so I'm kind of editing it in the middle right here. In order to even be able to adopt third-party cameras into Unify Protect, you'll have to launch Unify Protect, go into settings, go into system, and if it's not checked, you'll need to check discover third party cameras. At, at, at this point in time, it's still sort of a beta feature, but in, regardless, you'll have to check it right here. Another note before I finish my, uh, my edit here, unlike Unify Protect cameras that you can configure to only record on, for example, motion events, third party cameras, you, in, in third party cameras, you can do that. So they'll record all the time. I'm not sure if I will be using non-Unify uh, cameras in Unify Protect. I'm not sure, but it's a great thing to know that we're able to. All right, guys, so this was my attempt using non-Unify cameras in Unify Protect. I hope you guys liked it. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, everyone.